Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everybody that's uh, tuning in and listening. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate everybody taking the time to to tune into my shows. And this is a, a very important show coming up here with uh, Tom Scales. He's the co-founder of the Innocence Revolution, a global day to end child sexual abuse. And it's a uh, it's a worldwide event that's going to take place on Sunday, April 14th of this year, coming up. It's an uh, effort to build awareness and launch a global crusade against the crime of child sexual abuse. And um, this is just such a great opportunity to hear from Mr. Tom Scales. He's um, the co-founder of the Innocence Revolution, and he's been busy um, for what looks to be a long time um, fighting, you know, and in the crusade to fight against child sexual abuse and child abuse. So it's really um, a great honor to have him here. I know he's here now, and I'll bring him on here in just a minute. We only have a half hour today. Unfortunately, I only can do half hour shows, but it's just a great opportunity to hear from him. And I hope that you will share this this uh, broadcast when it's finished. Share it all over the place. Share it on Twitter. Share their website first of all. That's more important. Um, TheInnocenceRevolution.net. www.TheInnocenceRevolution.net. And um, share the information. Get it out there because it's really important. Children are being sexually abused. Uh, it's been a world, it's been a, a, a it's been going on forever since time began, and it's a worldwide issue. And people are are now stepping up to the plate, saying no more, you know. And so this is a great, um, awesome thing that's happening here. I got this information um, just it just popped into my email. I guess I was subscribed to something, and it, it popped into my inbox, and I checked it out, and I was like, oh, this is good. We need more of this. This is something that's very necessary. And I hope that everybody will get involved and take a look at the website to see what you can do to get involved. And we'll hear from Tom. He'll tell us about how you can get involved in, and what you can get involved in to, on that day, April 14th, coming up here um, you know, in a few weeks, to get involved to stop child sexual abuse. Right? I'm just going to read a little bit from the website. There's a, there's a tab on the website that talks about the leadership and um, the people that are actually that founded this um, organization, the Innocence Revolution, and founded this uh, movement and this event, and Tom Scales is a co-founder. He's chairman of the board of directors and a co-founder of the Innocence Revolution, and he's a certified trainer in workshops that educate adults on the dangers of child sexual abuse and safe practices to protect children, and he's written workshops to highlight the impact of divorce, grooming boundaries, and workplace challenges on children and survivors of child sexual abuse. He previously was the executive director of Voice Today, Incorporated. And Tom is a survivor of child sexual abuse and the author of Terrible Things Happen to Me, A True Story of Violence and Victory. And he was the recipient of the 2012 Georgia Author of the Year Award in the category for inspirational books presented by the Georgia Writers Association. And he's also the recipient of the 2012 Unsung Hero Award presented by Save Our Children and Families. So this is just a great honor to have Tom Scales here with us today, and I hope that everybody will, um, you know, take this message and share it and get it out there, uh, because I'm sure, you know, like the work that Tom and so many other people are doing is so important and so vital. So I'm going to bring Tom on now. Okay. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Lori. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm terrific, thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have well, an opportunity an to talk. Well, it's great to talk to your audience uh, about this whole issue. Uh, child sexual abuse is, is a, I guess we call it an epidemic, but it's really a pestilence on our children, and not just mm-hmm. the children in your neighborhood or your town, but literally all around the world. And something has to happen. And I can tell you, in in the U.S. alone, if you take the CDC statistics of one in four girls and one in six boys, and you take the current census information for uh, children under the age of 18, over the next 18 years, we're going to create, in the U.S. alone, 17 million new adult survivors of child sexual abuse. That's approximately 100 an hour every hour of every day without pause for 18 straight years. I mean, it's not possible to rescue and restore people that fast. It just can't be done. 
And no. so, so prevention is really the key. I agree. Absolutely. This is a huge issue. This I think there's a lot of times people don't realize, um, they don't, I think that much of the public doesn't think that, that this, these numbers are real and that this could even possibly be happening. You know what I mean? But for the survivors like myself and for lots, many people that I know who are survivors of child sexual abuse, we know it's all too true. And if something's got to happen, you're exactly I, I, you're exactly right. <laughs> so this is a great. Um, it's a great movement, you know, to get people uh, to you know to raise awareness and to promote prevention. Um, it's a huge issue. Yeah. It's uh, you know, kind of. I, I pressed, you, you gave me some questions and things that you want to talk about, but I think there's a much, a very very profound. Uh, topic that needs to be discussed, and need, if if your folks can spread the word, it's really really important. Think about what's happening in our society, and think about what you see today. Okay, mm-hmm. you you see stories on the news about children being violated. You see the story about Steubenville, Ohio. You see the story mm-hmm. about the Catholic Church. You see the story about the Boy Scouts. There, there are so many stories hitting us all at one time that, that you kind of get desensitized to what all these stories really mean. Mm-hmm. And what they mean is that, that we are violating children at just an extraordinary rate. And when you look at the events that happen, and if you want to change, change you tell me, but, but think about the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has protected, and I have no problem with the Catholic Church. I have a problem with how mm-hmm. they've handled the whole issue of the molestation of children. Okay? Yeah, that's and right. When, when, you, when you look at that, you say, they not only have hidden it up to now and moved people around to hide the predators and, and not expose them so that the children could get help, but they're still doing it. When you look at yeah. the Boy Scouts, they've got their perversion files, and they are so determined to protect the predators. These are people that are unacceptable for working in the Boy Scouts, and they are still so determined to protect them. They went to the California Supreme Court to block mm-hmm. the exposure of the files themselves. I mean, you say right. to yourself, this is a group that's supposed to be treating teaching citizenship and, and all those other good characteristics to, to our children. And you say, when do they start modeling the behavior that they're trying to teach? Mm-hmm. And, and then, then you turn around and you see the uh, uh, situation at Penn State. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A young man walks yeah. into a locker room, sees a young boy being sodomized, and rather than intervene, he goes and talks to his father. Okay, I mean, I I don't know how you deal with being that young man and having that image in your mind for a long time. I mean, he literally mm-hmm. walked away. Then you then you turn around and you look at what's happening in Steubenville, Ohio, right yeah. within this time window. Okay, and and we have children walking in on young men vilely and violently. Uh, attacking a young woman, assaulting her sexually when she was literally comatose. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they whip out their cell phone, and what do they do? Do they call 911 to get help? No, they don't. They take pictures. Right. Think think about it for a second. I mean, it's an an image that is just stunning when you think about where our society is. And so Mm -hmm. this is happening in every country in the world. Okay, it's not just the U.S., not just, I'm in Marietta, Georgia, it's not just Georgia, okay? It is literally mm-hmm. every town, every city, every country in the world. And I'm, I'm on uh, LinkedIn one day, and, and I see this question by Jill Starshevsky, and the question is, gee, what would a day look like without child sexual abuse? And I thought, holy cow, what a great question that was. And mm-hmm. so I contacted her, and without knowing it, Carl Hart in St. Louis contacted her. And, and the three of us ended up talking, and we said, you know, we've got to do something. 
And so we're going mm-hmm. to do something that's on. We're the original founders of the Innocence Revolution. And, and Carl is with Justel. And so mm-hmm. so he's really been been varied in a lot of other stuff and things that they're doing. And so we haven't seen him as much, but, but he's clearly one of the, the forerunners of this whole thing. And mm-hmm. he's all about his telling. And so, so we created the mission, which is to unite and mobilize societies worldwide to end child sexual abuse. We we want it to end, okay? Mm-hmm. And and we want to raise people's awareness so that that the situations that I, I'm not documented in the U.S. where where people look like past it happening. Okay, mm-hmm. how how you can walk in on someone being victimized like that? Frankly, if if someone were there with a knife and they were trying to stab them, everybody would jump in to protect them. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a different kind of a crime. This is a crime that literally, by virtue of itself, it intimidates the observer. And we have to get mm-hmm. past that. One of the goals of the Innocence Revolution is to make child sexual abuse so visible and so apparent and such a predominant topic of discussion that that sooner or later people will start reacting the right way when mm-hmm. they see something that's inappropriate because today they're just not doing it. Right. So 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 we started this movement with the Innocent Revolution. Right now we've got I think over thirty two or thirty three states where we will have events. And we have over 30 countries where we will have events. The the events are designed to be on April 14, 2013, and that was the original plan. Uh, They're going to be plus or minus a few days, frankly, because of cultural issues in some area, facility availability in others. Uh, For example, the the activity in in Georgia where I live is going to be on the 19th. The facilities just weren't available. But, But the message is, Let's hold these events. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the implications of it. Let's talk about the damage. I, th- I think a lot of people, I'm going to go back to the, to, to the Boy Scouts as an example. Um, first of all, let me, let me tell you just a bit more about myself and, and about my book. Uh, I'm a survivor of incest. I'm also a survivor of sexual abuse by a scout leader. I'm also a survivor of sexual abuse by two priests. And I'm a survivor of wow. sexual abuse by a stranger. Mm-hmm. I was sexually molested by eight different men. And I was held down a rape by a young woman before I was 13. And so I understand the issue. I understand the trauma that it causes. And I understand the struggles mm-hmm. of every survivor. And if you're a survivor, you don't have to have the same level of action in your life as I had to be traumatized and be damaged in really serious and profound ways. Mm-hmm. And so I'm a firm believer right. now that if you're if you're violated one time or if you're violated hundreds of times, uh, if you're violated by one person or a dozen or two dozen or five dozen, it doesn't really make any difference. The violation of trust, the, the devaluation mm-hmm. of you as a person, all of those yep. things uh, play into to your self-destructive behavior and your view of yourself and, and frankly, the way you devalue yourself and see yourself as a tool that people should just use. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so so you have all these events going on in people's lives. Uh, the tendency is, and when I talk to people, I hear this all the time, uh, I was in Boy Scouts, it was great. My son's been in Boy Scouts, and nothing has been ever better for him. And and I say to every one of those people, I'm happy for you. I'm thankful for you. Okay? My experience obviously wasn't the same. Thousands of young men, their experiences were not the same. And and mm-hmm. it is it's not your responsibility to, and I'll use the word gloat for lack of a better choice of words, to gloat about how your son didn't have a problem. It's your responsibility as a member of our society, to stand up to the Boy Scouts and say, you must do the right thing here. Mm -hmm. You must present those files to law enforcement. You must do everything you can to enable justice to occur 
for the crimes that have been committed. Yeah, and that's right. The same thing applies to the Catholic Church. Yeah. No, it's it's horrible. Um, I agree. Something it's almost like what it. I think a lot of it is because people do not, you know, who are not affected by it, do not view it as a crime. And for whatever reason, I, I I'm yeah, like I'm just not sure why society feels, um, you know, the, the, uh, not everyone, but a, a large part of the society feels that because it hasn't happened to them and it doesn't seem to be an issue, that they don't need to get involved. You know, and that it uh, that so in the meantime, yeah, things are not being done. Things are, uh, you're right. There's there's a, a lot of inaction because people think, well, it didn't happen to me, and it's not happening to my children or children that I know. So you know, what? Why should I get involved? What does it matter to me? Well, we have a yeah, duty. Yeah. As far as I, we have a duty to protect children. Absolutely, absolutely, and and you know, I've, I've really. I guess as I've gotten older, I've uh, uh, taken a different view of all these violent events that we see, okay? And and mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just single out the Connecticut incident and the Aurora, Colorado incident as two examples. And, and I'm not I'm not saying that anyone involved in those incidents were were uh, victims of child sexual abuse, but what I am saying is that when we see events like that. Our first reaction is that person's crazy, or we need ban guns. Okay, we never mm-hmm. stop and say, how much rage does a young man have to have in him to look his mother in the face and shoot her four times in the face? Mm-hmm. I mean, picture that. It needs, it's horrifying. Yeah. The anger and rage that he must have. What? How much anger and rage? What could have happened to a young man that would make it okay for him to walk into a movie theater and shoot all those people? Something mm-hmm. happened to these folks, and and I think yeah. that our society tends to call it mental illness, okay? And they do the same thing with child sexual abuse. Okay, I can tell you from my yeah. own yeah. personal experience. I was not abused and I was not molested, okay? I was sodomized over and over again. I was forced to perform all sex over and over again. I had it done to me over and over again. Those, those, those give you a picture of what happens to the, to the victim, whereas molested and, and abused don't really do that. I mean, they're, they're kind of sanitary terms that... Um, uh, you know, leave a lot of visual interpretation out. Mm-hmm. And, and That's right. Until, until we as a society come to terms with the reality of what happens to a child and why a child turns to alcohol and drugs, why they turn to get to have depression, okay, why they turn to cutting and burning themselves, okay, why they cannot hold relationships, okay? These Mm -hmm. are the real outcomes of child sexual abuse. And if you follow the trend, just just a bit bit of a cascade here I like to draw for people. Um, You have a young man who is sexually abused. He doesn't trust a soul after that. I don't know how many survivors I've had tell me I don't trust anybody, okay? And that was me for a long time. So they don't trust Mm -hmm. anybody. And so they, they they grow up, they get married, they get jobs, but their trust doesn't change, and their trust in the relationship, in the marital relation, doesn't change, and and so so frequently the marriages fail. Well, the statistics for what happens to a young man, a child, in a fatherless home, are stunning mm-hmm. in terms of. The extent to which that group of people are are far and away the largest portion of suicides, incarcerated, uh, in uh, institutional care for substance abuse. Mm-hmm. They come from fatherless homes. They come from fatherless homes because, in many cases, you have young men who are violated 
the young men and women too. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't don't misinterpret mm-hmm. that. Who are violated yeah. and, and have no understanding of how to live their life. I can tell you when mm-hmm. when I hit eighteen, I had no boundaries whatsoever. In my right. world, everything was okay. Everything was okay. Nothing was forbidden. Mm-hmm. And and it's taken me a long time to to rebuild myself. Mm-hmm. As a person, it does take, I, 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 it can. Pardon? Yeah, it can take a lifetime to and continue all it is, to work. It's a lifetime for me. You know, for sure. It's, uh, it, it's uh, so so. This is what the Innocence Revolution is all about. And frankly, we're not going to be the only one. We don't want to be the only one. We want a million organizations out there doing exactly what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay? I'm, I'm more and more convinced every day that more people should focus on awareness and courage than on prevention. I mean, I can read you some points on prevention. I think you mentioned that in, in one of the notes we talked about. Mm-hmm. I can I give you your listeners have a pencil and a piece of paper. I can give you one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven different prevention tools that if you apply them, you're going to materially improve the safety of your child. Okay? Mm-hmm. One is to teach your kids the proper names of their body parts if you don't apply mm-hmm. their will. The second one is to teach your children at the earliest possible age of talking to three to bathe themselves and care for their own bathroom needs, to avoid one-on-one adult child time, especially Mm -hmm. in lessons and athletics and things like that. Be the parent, be there, okay? Have Have a family policy of absolutely no secrets whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Okay, because the secrets are the strongest, most powerful tool in the predator. Never force a child to give a hug or a kiss or any type of affection to anyone. I don't care who it is, whether it's grandma, grandpa, special aunt Bessie, or whoever it is, because mm-hmm. you're taking away from them their control over their judgment of who they give affection to, and you're making mm-hmm. them very vulnerable. Uh, Another one, if a child sits on someone's lap, you should always, without exception, be able to see their hands. And you need to set a family policy that that when we're all sitting around and Johnny Sue is sitting on Uncle Ben's lap, you got to see both of Uncle Ben's hands. Mm -hmm. Okay? I can't tell you how many people, how many uh, survivors have told me, frankly, they they were molested right in the front room, right in front of the family. And no one ever knows. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. and so, and and so those are those are really simple things that can change the whole path of a child's life. Mm-hmm. So, so That's right. those, those, are, those are prevention, and intervention means that if you see something that's not appropriate, you intervene. But but think about this for a second. Um, Steubenville, they saw it. I didn't intervene. Mm-hmm. I wonder why not. I mean, what, what have these kids, what have adults, people learned that that uh, stops them from intervening in an right. event like that? The same yeah. thing for the guy. And, 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 and I'm, I'm becoming a believer that, that organizations like the Catholic Church and the Boy Scouts, who are frankly standards in our society, Mm-hmm. They, their very behavior is modeling a behavior to all of our society. Don't get involved. Only take care right. of yourself. Yeah, okay? that's right. And in which case, that all the children of the world are amazingly vulnerable and no one steps up to protect the child. Literally. Yeah. And, and so... Yeah. so your your listeners, you know, if they don't take anything away from this at all, is open your eyes and see what's going on around you. Think about those five or six things I just mentioned. How often you see someone sitting on a, a child sitting on someone's lap and you cannot see their hands. That means every single one of them are predators, no one does them. But mm-hmm. you can't really tell. 
And so for the safety of the child, you create a family policy that says this is how we're going to be so that when our child sees sees or feels something that's really unusual and, and outside of the boundaries of what we are doing as a family, you will alert them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have another theory, if, I, if you don't mind. I'd like to, to propose it also. And this is to all the fathers. Um, you have a special opportunity to protect your daughters from both child sexual abuse and trafficking. Okay. Mm-hmm. If, if, a, if a father respects his wife, treats her with courtesy and dignity and honor, his daughter's going to see that. He should treat her the same way. His daughter's going to see that. So when when a guy starts cursing and swearing at her, he's just going, whoa, I don't want this in my life. Mm-hmm. Okay? But if but if, if the father is cursing and swearing at his wife and smacking her around and doing all kinds of, of disrespectful things to her, the daughter's going to say, well, this must be normal. It's supposed to be the way you get treated by a guy. Mm-hmm. And so she's going to expect that or be tolerant of it. And the other yeah. side is, this man is sitting off to the side watching the whole thing, and he said, Gee, this must be how you manage a man or a worker in a relationship. I just got to have an iron hand here. I'm going to learn from my dad how to do it. And so the father's teaching the son to replicate that kind of destructive behavior um, Mm-hmm. And frankly, then we wonder why our, all of our children are so vulnerable to to trafficking. It's because yeah. of the example they see. So it's it's so, huge. So that kind of, it is. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just it's so huge. Like all of all of what you're what you've just said there. Um, it just it starts in the family. It starts you know with with the 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 way that the that, that the child's brought up. You know, to what they're seeing, what they're hearing, what they're what what's taking place around them. You know, as they grow up in in, in their home or in a caregiver's home, or you know, and it just shows you like with the amounts of of abusers, people, you know, child sexual abusers who have been caught and arrested and sentenced and sent to you know who are found guilty of child sexual abuse. And those are just the ones that were caught. When I even you know that doesn't include everyone out there who's doing this and not hasn't been caught yet. What what must their home lives have been like? It's very very important to remember that this all starts really young, and we this is why this needs to change. Because we're like you said when you first came on the show, that we're going to produce um, 17 million uh, more survivors in the next you know here in the next, in the next short period of time. Yeah, like we can't keep up with this. The world can't keep up with this. Like you said, it, it's, really, it's, really, it's really interesting because uh, we have a colleague in Arizona who we talk to from time to time, and he ministers to men coming out of prison who were convicted of sex crimes. And at the last time we talked to him, he said 100% of them, no exception, were sexually abused as children. Mm-hmm. We we yeah. have a uh, Latino clinic here in Georgia that we we work with from time to time, and he said. 100% of the young women that they rescued from the street were sexually abused as children. And so, mm-hmm. so when you, when you, when you look, and, and maybe there are other causes in addition to that. Okay. But yeah. sexual abuse is a powerful destructive force in the life of a child. Mm-hmm. And, and if we can stop it, we can have an amazing impact on the whole tenor of our society mm-hmm. around the world. And, and that's, that's really what the, innocent, that's what the Innocence Revolution is all about. And that's what our ultimate goal is. I mean, we don't have any programs. We're not going to have any programs. We want to connect people who have programs with people who need programs. We want mm-hmm. everybody in the world talking about it. Think about it on April 14th, with events going on all around the world, there will be thousands of children who will not be violated because a couple of people are going to be talking about this and they're going to they're going to scare a predator away by the language, mm-hmm. or the child is going to be around them and and no one is going to have access 
Okay? Mm-hmm. They, won't, they may never be touched in their life. We've given them an extraordinary gift of life. Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. Yeah. We need, to, we need to do that every day, every minute of every day. That's right. This, yeah, that's right. It should be every day, every day of the year, um, you know, and, and going forward. But I love what you what you all are doing. And, you know, the show is just about over. But I uh, I just appreciate you taking the time, Tom, to come on the show and to speak to my listeners. And I hope that everybody will take this show and share it around. Share the website around the innocencerevolution.net. Uh, right. Get involved. I can, I, can re- I can register. They can register there. They can. There are events listed on that connect to the map, so they can find one in their area. If there's not one in their area, they can contact us. We'll do our best to help them. It's getting a little late, but we'll do our best to help them get something organized. They don't have to be massive concerts with twenty thousand people. Okay. Right. They can be five people handing out brochures on awareness. Right. I that's mean, that's, it's that basic in what we're doing. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm so I'm I'm thankful, thankful, thankful to you all for doing what you're doing, and I hope to be more involved next year. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually hope, I, I try to be involved every day, but I'd like to support this. I think this is great, and I think you know we'll see what happens here. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens on the 14th of April. I'll be sharing all the information, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all the social networking sites. And just get the word out. So, so thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I had a good friend here today, John Harrison from the U.K. He's a survivor, and uh, he's a great um, – he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's like you, Tom. He's out there uh, busy, you know, in, in the, you know, promotion, yep. prevention. And, um, you know, I, I'm uh, just thankful. Uh, I tell, tell, tell John to contact me at the Innocence Revolution at gmail.com. Yes, I uh, will do that. So thank you so much, Tom, and I appreciate your work, and I appreciate your story, and I, I'd, I'd love to read your book sometime. And I just I appreciate you sharing and being so open and honest and so real about this issue. And I and I thank you for everything that you're doing. Hey, thanks so much. Thanks for having me, and thanks yeah. for giving me an opportunity to talk about the issue. Yeah, that's awesome. It was a wonderful time. Thanks a lot, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great day. We'll talk to you real soon. Make sure you get out there and promote prevention. Yeah. Take this serious. For sure. If you have children, you know, you be sure and you protect your children. Protect all children. And God bless you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.